before we introduce the USB Guru, I'd like to just go over a few slides for you. So this shows the uh, microcontroller product lines and how we segregate the part types. So we have on the on the low end the uh, Cortex M0, M0 Plus devices, and then the next to that we have the LPC Connect family, and that includes. The differentiator there is we add things like USB, CAN, uh, and peripherals such as that. Uh, the Connect Plus, we add uh, things like LCDs, uh, Ethernet, Connect Turbo, that's the highest performance Cortex-M devices. The LPC-1800 running at 180 megahertz, LPC, the dual core LPC-4300 running at, at 204 megahertz as well as the LPC-2900. And above that, the ARM9 device is the LPC command uh, line of microcontrollers. So we have uh, a long history of developing ARM microcontrollers. And today, we're going to be using the LPC-1347. Now looking at this part, uh, it is a Cortex-M3 based device running at 72 megahertz, up to 72 megahertz. Uh, has a full complement of the usual peripherals such as SSP slash SS, um, SPI, I squared C, USB, USART, has an ADC, windowed watch type timer. Uh, and it has also the, another unique feature is USB ROM code drivers. So within the uh, part, you have ROM code drivers, certified USB. So. Uh, for mass storage class, hit class, CDC, or composite. So you have certified USB drivers, which of course uh, decreases your time to market, decreases your cost because you're not using valuable uh, flash space, uh, and you don't have to learn a lot about USB because that's all encapsulated within that uh, ROM code. Uh, also from that, from the 1300, you can actually uh, downgrade to an LPC 11U, which is a Cortex M0. So those are totally interchangeable between the M0 and M3. So that's a nice feature, depending upon your application. So looking at the roadmap for this uh, Connect family, we have on the left hand side you'll see the LPC 213X, 4X, and th those are ARM7s. They've been around for, for quite a while now, and pretty soon we'll be bring out Cortex M3 versions of those parts. Uh, we have the recently released the LPC 11U 2X, 3X types of parts, uh, the 13 4X, which we're talking about today, and also, we also have the LPC 11A parts. The 11A parts have a lot of analog, so what we're doing there is we're integrating the analog parts uh, fu functionality with the USB functionality in the 1300, and we're coming out with the LPC 13A devices. So you're gonna have USB with a, a lot of uh, uh, analog functionality. So that's the roadmap for this product family. So at this point, I would like to introduce our USB guru. This is Dale Sparling. Thank you. It's nice to have a little M3 or M0 micro very small cheap part that has USB on it obviously. So um, today I'm going to show how you can measure the bandwidth of one of our full speed USB devices on our micro. So uh, we have, uh, we, we provide a USB uh, library stack. It uh, supports both uh, host and device mode and it works on, on our high speed and full speed devices and uh, it does isochronous as well as the other transfer types and the same stack and examples uh, work equally well hey. on, um, on Kyle uh, IR and our own branded tool chain um, code red LPC Expresso we call it. Uh, we have examples on lots and lots of boards and lots of class examples as you can see there. So to get uh, LPC open platform, uh, which is a platform that holds the LPC lib, you go to this website. Now this, this uh, presentation is going to be online, so you can go back and reference it later. And click on that link if you like. All right. And, and uh, the, the website will 
it gives you information on how to get the boards that we have the examples running on and how to get the, uh, the software, how to configure the tools, all that stuff. And uh, it's all in one zip file, you just download it, and this is all the things you get in, the, in that zip file. These are all the classes that we support. Um, the example that I'm going to show today is, is not one of these examples, it's a vendor-specific example. So it's a custom thing using bulk endpoints. Now, um, some of our parts have uh, the device stack in ROM as well as the class, uh, different classes. So this is very, very useful because it saves you space. And we have certified our parts using this ROM stack. So it, it works, and it works well. The, um, the USB library that, um, that I'm going to be running the example on today actually will make use of this stack if you want, uh, the ROM drivers if you want. All you got to do is uh, set one, one um, uh, defined in a header file and it'll switch over to using the, the, the device stack instead of using the software stack. That's pretty useful because that way, you know, you don't have to change your application when you move from a part that doesn't have drivers to one that does in the ROM. Now this, these are only device mode drivers, not host mode drivers. And it's easy to use. Again, this is where, do you, where you get it, all the links and stuff. And uh, let me show you. Uh, this is this is the uh, this is what the the web page looks like for it. LPC Open Platform is is our complete driver platform library that has uh, library other libraries like stack libraries that just plugs into the platform. Okay, and it's a it's a single platform for all of our microcontrollers, all our Cortex microcontrollers. So it has uh, exact same or very similar uh, APIs for all the different drivers. So let's say you have two different parts that have two different I2C controllers in them. Uh, we'll have a, an API in there that, that works for both of them as well as lower level APIs that work for, that let you access the unique features on, on each one. Okay, so this is the demo. Time for, we're actually going to run a board here. Uh, this is the board. This is a 1347 on this side. On this side is a complete JTAG a debugger, which is very nice, 29.95. And uh, today we're going to be running um, um, our uh, branded uh, debugger, which allows you up to 128K of, of binary. So you can do quite a bit with, with this package. So for 29.95, you can be up and running on, on any of these examples or a lot of these examples. Okay, so we're also going to be using uh, a total phase Beagle protocol analyzer and total phase uh, left some brochures here if you want to pick them up. We're going to be using the, the, the 480. That's it right there. It's a nice little protocol analyzer. And this is how we're setting up. This is how we, we have it connected, just, just like you would expect. With, uh, with any, uh, any uh, USB sniffer. Okay, so, so today we're gonna talk about um, the measuring the bandwidth uh, that goes over the USB, a full, full speed USB connection using the protocol analyzer. Something pretty simple. So if you think about it, these microcontrollers, like the 1347, it's a Cortex-M3, um, it's the, the USB controller in it is going to be able to deliver you the, the full speed of USB. However, uh, whether you, there's enough power in the CPU to actually do anything with that data or to, to, to do what you want with that data is, is uh, something you're going to have to tune. So you, in this particular example, I'm showing you what could be a board like this. There's a little daughter card here that has a sensor. It's one of our new sensors. It's got a, it, sens it uh, provides uh, temperature, humidity, and light. All right. So let's say that uh, this board is the sensor in the picture. And uh, the SBI bus is going to be 4.5 megabytes per second bandwidth. And the USB is going to be, um, you know, up to a megabyte per second. The, the spec is 1.2 megabits. And, and whatever filters you have in there uh, could, could slow that uh, 
that uh, data uh, path down quite a bit. So you, there's going to be a trade-off between um, how much work that the CPU is going to have to do on the data versus how much data you want to actually get off the board and to the outside world. So again, the 1347, it's a it's Cortex M3 running at 72 megahertz. And um, it can, it can if you just do a simple copy from one chunk of memory to another, it can actually move 21 megabytes of memory. There's not that much in the chip, of course. I just put it in a loop. Um, it can, it can uh, process about four megabytes per second doing a CRC calculation, and two and a half megabits per second doing an FIR filter, okay? So, and, and the USB, again, uh, the spec is 1.2 megabit, but in reality, you're gonna get about a megabyte. So going back to this, let's say that you, you just want to get raw data off that sensor over the SPI bus, four and a half megabytes per second, uh, no filters. Uh, you're going to be able to get it through to the laptop at, at the full bus, USB bus speed. Of course, the USB bus is going to be the bottleneck in this case. But let's say that you add in um, a couple of filters and a CRC or whatever you know, that really slows it down. Now, now the CPU is going to be the bottleneck. And um, you're going to want to measure that, you know, how much, how much, how fast are you actually getting the data off the board? So, and you're going to have to make some trade-offs. Okay, so real quick review on USB. Everybody know this? Okay, so this is bulk transfer. Um, this is going from from the from the device to the PC, or if the PC is the host. So the, the host asks for, uh, sends a token requesting a, a packet, or, or uh, in this case, it's, yeah, requesting a packet. And the, um, the function will respond with either the data that, that, that it's asking for, or a stall, or a NAC. Now in this example today, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a combination of either data being sent over, or the NAC, because, okay? And then follows up with an acknowledgement. And this is the direction we're going to actually run today. So the, the host is, is telling the device, hey, I've got a packet for you. And then it sends the packet, puts it on the bus. And then the, the device comes back and says, either I got it or I, don't, I can't do anything with it right now. My buffer is full. That's mainly the reason why they would do a NAC or a stall. Well, a stall is different. OK, so this is, uh, this is the demo. So what I have is I have a, a PC application uh, running Win, Win USB and a C Sharp uh, application, and it's blasting uh, large blocks of data to the board. And um, the USB host uh, device on the PC is breaking them up into 64-byte uh, packets. And the buffer that we have on our device can only hold 512 bytes. So the the 64 byte uh, packets are going to blast over at full speed at a megabyte per second um, to the device as soon as it fills up uh, that buffer then the, the USB controller on the device is going to start sending NAC saying hey I, I don't have any space anymore now the CPU meanwhile is is going to be sitting there doing nothing until it gets a it's going to be spinning in a foreground task waiting for a flag to be set. Now the flag gets set whenever the endpoint buffer is filled. So packets fill, uh, come over, the buffer fills up, it, it, it triggers the interrupt which uh, flips the flag and then the next time the the foreground process comes around it says hey uh, the buffer is full and then it does a CRC calculation on the buffer and it clears the buffer out so that the controller can come around and do it again. And it just does that over and over again. Now this is the uh, software that's uh, used with the total phase. Uh, it's just a, your typical run-of-the-mill, you know, well, it's better than run-of-the-mill. It's a great USB protocol analyzer. Um, you know, it shows you the packets, it shows you, it breaks down the, the, um, the descriptors and gives you all that information. What we're going to be looking for, though, is that it has the ability to show you the, the transfer rate by you highlight one of the packets and then you move the, the cursor down and it'll give you an overall average of, of the, the transfer across those packets. All right. And the, the application 
is going to be running, the foreground task is going to run in three different speeds. It's going to, every uh, 100 microseconds, or every one millisecond, or every one, 10 milliseconds, it's going to come around and decide to uh, clear out that buffer and perform the calculation. And what you're going to see is whenever it does run at, at uh, whenever it does clear the buffer out every 100 microseconds, then it can, it can almost keep up with the bus. In fact, uh, you'll only get about one knack or so per, uh, per, per uh, SOF. At, at uh, one millisecond, you'll get about seven knacks, and as you can see, at 10 milliseconds, you get a whole lot more. All right. Now, in this software, uh, they, NACs, they call NACs poles. So, and the third one down below, you see I, I expanded it out so you can see the, the NAC. So one pole means that there was one NAC. You know, seven poles means there were seven NACs. Okay. Let's see if it's still running. I left it running when I... Uh... Okay. Oh, dear. All right. I had it on the circular buffer. This, this analyzer can, um, can operate with a circular buffer, but I, uh, I guess I didn't save it. Let me set that up. There. Let's hope that stays that way now. Yes, I know that. There we go. Now it's running right now. Let me show you the, uh, the application running. 117, all right. Now, right here you can see the foreground rate. It's, it does five, uh, five loops of, um, ten, of 100 microseconds, one millisecond, 10 milliseconds. And this is the foreground load. You can see that this is, this is how much, what percentage of the CPU that it's taking to do this task. Now, every other time through the three, three different time rates, I kick in a, a CRC filter, just for fun. And you can see that the foreground load goes way, way up. Now, uh, notice the IRQ load, um, you know, whenever, it's, uh, whenever we're actually operating, uh, sending packets, and by the way, here's the, this is the little PC application that sends the packets. If I stop the test, tell it to stop sending, you'll, you'll notice, okay, I'm not getting packets anymore. So, and in fact, uh, the USB bus analyzer is no, is no longer, it's just, it's doing lots and lots of, of waiting for, uh, for packets. Uh, let me turn that back on. Okay. Okay, so let's see. In review, let's, let's review this. Oh, hold on here. Yeah. Now, let me try to position this just so. I was afraid this might happen. They, these TVs have lowered my resolution. So, oop. Unscripted. It wouldn't be fun if it wasn't if it was unscripted, right? All right. Let me put it right there. All right. So, let's see if we can stop this. Oh. Oh. Start it up again. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to let it cycle around to no CRC and 100 microsecond. There. Now what you see here is these are all of the, the NACs. If I double click, there's the NAC right there. Okay? And if I, if I highlight or if I click on a uh, on one of these lines here, let's go up a little ways. First of all, you'll notice that w when I'm not doing a CRC calculation, the CPU is so fast that it can periodically can actually come in and clear that buffer before, <laughs> before the host actually sends the next packet. And this is one case right here where that happened. So there should have been a one, one NAC right here, but there wasn't. So if I click on, on this line here and I drag my cursor down, look down at the bottom of the screen, it says 900 kilobits per second, right? Almost a megabyte per second. And if I if I look if I click it on just, uh, see. 
Oh, this is megabytes, yeah, okay, very good. Um, if I click on, on just, just uh, the difference between uh, two packets in between that uh, buffer, get back to this. There. So in between these two pa these packets before this was filled up, that's going to blast over because when this is happening, the CPU is not bothered. It's the controller is doing all the work of, of sending out all those acts. So the, the host sends out the, 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 the packet. The controller hasn't filled up its buffer yet, so it sends out the act and everything's going top speed. All right. Now, when, when, um, when it's running at, uh, when, it, when it, the CPU is, is updating that, that foreground task every millisecond, then you have a lot more, uh, there's a lot more delay. So let's see if I can get that going. I'll crank it back up again. There. Well, okay, we'll just keep it going. All right, now here's the CRC. Um, when I was not doing the CRC, um, I was only seeing about three poles. Uh, one pole, sometimes no polling at all. But with the CRC in place, the, the CPU gets a little bit behind because it's doing its work. So um, three, uh, the host is able to send three, three uh, in pack or out packets to the, to the device before the device actually gets around to fill emptying out the buffer. Now it's doing 100, 150 poles, 140 poles, uh, NAX, that's what they really are. And, and when, it's, when it's at that large number, that's because it's taking 10 milliseconds uh, to get around to actually clearing out that buffer. Okay? So, Using this, this um, the protocol analyzer, you're able to easily determine what your band, bus bandwidth is, and then you can go in and you can make whatever modifications you need in the CPU to, to guarantee that you have a, you know, you, you get your, uh, your bus data bandwidth up to a reasonable level. Or, if, if there's just nothing you can do and you have to process the data, then you're just gonna have to come up with trade-offs and figure out what you, which way you wanna go, okay? That was short and simple, wasn't it? So uh, this, uh, this example, it's called the, the, the bandwidth uh, tuning demo, and it is available right now on our older um, USB platform called NXB USB Lib, which is up on, uh, also up on our website. Um, we will be putting, porting it over to the new platform, or, or it's already mostly ported over, and the next version of uh, LPC Open Platform will be coming out uh, at the end of end of next month and it'll be 1.04 and it'll have this demo and it'll also have the demo running on our high-speed controllers so you'll be able to see that uh, we'll, we'll prove to you that the data actually can be brought into the chip at, at high speed as well so and our high-speed controllers by the way are OHCI uh, or EHCI compliant and the full-speed host controllers are OHCI compliant which is nice because you could just take uh, your existing OHCI, EHCI driver uh, software and just pretty much drop it right in and it'll be running. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, US, USB 2.0 um, includes low speed, full speed, and high speed. That's high speed, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has three different speeds. So, okay, I, um, USB 2.0 um, in, includes those three speeds. So I'm, this, this controller runs at full speed. So I'm running at the, maybe I need to change the slide. Uh, it runs at, at uh, the maximum full speed USB 2.0 rate, yeah, which is 1.2 megabits. And that includes uh, the protocol that's, uh, that's included with with all the, all the handshakes and all the acknowledges. So, so the, the real data rate is about a megabyte. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
So this is neat. Check out this new, this new sensor. I think we're going to come out with it soon. Um, don't know why the light is in there, but temperature and humidity, I'm sure that's very useful. All right, that's hey, it. Pleasure, thank you. Thank you, thank you.